today I'm gonna show you my live scope setup on my kayak between the pole to the screens to the batteries and everything in between. So let's go ahead and jump in. Starting with the screens, I've got two Garmin GPS map 8610 XSV screens. I have two, a lot of people think it is overkill, but the primary reason why is if you look down here, I've actually got two Garmin LiveScope transducers. I've got the LVS 34, the LiveScope Plus, and I've got the LVS 32, which is the original LiveScope transducer. So if we go back up to the screens here, the way that I use the screens, as you can kind of see here, this is in demo mode because I'm obviously in my garage, but on one side of the screen, I can have the LVS32, I can have the LVS34. I do this for split screen testing, or if I have one in forward, one in down, there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. And then the other screen, I would normally have my maps up, and I would have my down view or side view right here. Traditionally, my side view is what I would use or I can go full screen LVS 32, full screen LVS 34, I do full screen map and just the 34. As you can imagine, tons of different things that you can do, lots of combo uh, opportunities there. The other big reason for these screens is on the back here. So these screens have just about everything on the back of them. These are their flagship model in the 10 inch. So you can see here, we've got HDMI out. We've got the network ports and everything else. That HDMI out is really, really critical for me. And the reason why it's so critical is this guy right here. This is a screen recorder that I keep in this little Busby uh, waterproof bag. It's a 4K screen recorder that I've got an HDMI cord hooked up to USB. I put a power pack in here, a couple microphones just to sync up audio after. That comes out of there and it runs right up into the back of the unit. And that's what allows me to do screen recording. So when I'm out fishing and I need to capture something from the live scope on the screens, or if I'm just catching a big fish or I need to do some other demo off of the Garmin screens, I can actually have that in high quality footage rather than just a camera pointed at a screen like you probably see a lot of on uh, YouTube. Nothing wrong with that. I just prefer the HDMI route for that crystal clear, clean footage. And real quick, I just wanna call out Bang Energy for sponsoring today's video. This is one of my favorite drinks of theirs that they have, the Sour Heads flavor. There's a few that I really like. Link down below in the description helps the channel out. Check them out more on this later in the video. All right, so if we keep going here, let's head over to the fun part and then we'll get into the wiring, the batteries and all of that. So this right here is my pole mount. I just wired this up so you can see I've got some wire management to do here. This is going back to a 12 volt uh, power supply in the kayak underneath my seat. But this is the first build steady scope transducer mount. So this is an electronic transducer active targeting system. So what you can see here is they've got their cord for the power and then I've got my two transducers pull mounted on the bottom of it, right? So I've got my LVS 34 lower down, I've got the LVS 32 higher up. And you can see here if I swing around to the front side, they're both pointed straight out. Go up the pole. What I've got here is I've got it in a, a cable wrap here to protect the cables and I've just got Velcro around it to the pole itself in two different spots. Go further up and what you're gonna see here is they've got uh, the cord to the head unit. This head unit has a feature in it where it'll do a 360 degree turn. It'll stop and swing back the other way to keep going in a circle so that this cord and this cord don't get crazy wrapped up in circles. Kind of like a lot of trolling motors do. So this is the transducer mount that I'm using and I've got it hooked up to a RAM mount. Uh, the RAM mount that I'm using is the D size balls. I'll link all of this down below in the description, anything from the video. So in case you're interested in picking it up or checking it out, D ball mounted directly to the bottom of the plate into a long size arm, D size on both sides, into a track mount. These are aftermarket track mounts. These come from Yak Attack. These are their aluminum mounts. These things are absolutely awesome. That's what I got mounted here. This thing is super steady. I can use the trolling motor with this thing, max speed 10, and this arm doesn't budge at all. A lot more videos coming out on this guy. I just got it, I just got it hooked up here. I'll link a video at the end of this that goes through exactly what this does and all the features. I'm super excited about it. 
All right, so if we keep following the cables back here, so the cables from the transducers themselves go all the way back here, again, in a nice little wrap. They go down behind the screens. In the screens, real quick, since we're passing it right now, the screens I have mounted on a crossbar. I'll link these parts down below, but these are a bracket that ties into the track mount. It's very important to have the heavy duty track mounts. And this is a solid aluminum bar that goes all the way across. I've got ram mounts into your normal cradles that you use for these two screens. You can use them on any screens. I could use it with just one screen. I really like the idea of having it in the middle of the kayak where I'm sitting rather than off to the side. A lot of people will put their screen on the side. I don't like that. So that's the way that I got it set up. Cable management all the way over. None of them go in this side of the kayak. They all come across this rail. I don't use zip ties on anything because it cuts into the cords. I use little Velcro straps for everything. So that all comes over here. And then as you can see here, it's kind of a jumbled mess, but it is actually wrapped up pretty good down here. Um, and then I've got two through hauls for the live scope transducer cables, the ethernet cables, power cables for the screens, all right here. Here's a little bit better angle that you can see here. So we've got the cords come in, they go into these through hauls. These are the only kayak through haul uh, adapters that I could find that actually fit the end of the live scope cable. So make sure you check out the link down below for these guys. I don't remember exactly who makes them, but I know that they're the only ones without modifying them that would fit that big end of that live scope transducer cable. So through here, what we do is it's going into the through haul. That through haul is accessible for me through this uh, front haul opening. So this is just a little access panel, turn it, pop her off. So what we've got in this front opening is a couple of things. First, we've got one black box on the right hand side and we've got another black box on the left hand side. The way that those are attached is just with Velcro. So I've got Velcro on this side, Velcro on this side. So they're actually hanging right on the side of the kayak up front. I've never had any issues with it. It's heavy duty, outdoor grade Velcro. Um, it works awesome. My wires are wired up and rolled up down there using Velcro straps. Again, no zip ties. I've got my fuses in there. And if we look towards the back here, this is my Garmin chart plotter, live scope, black box power center, if you will. So what we've got here is one battery there, one battery there. You can see I've got them wired together. These are Amped Outdoors 48 amp hour NMC batteries. They're not cheap, but they work absolutely fantastic. I can power my dual screen setup with both transducers and black boxes going full brightness for 17 hours with no issues. Going up the side of the kayak over here, what we've got is our power port. So this is what I set up for my battery power management system. This is my master power switch. It's just a circle button that you can push in and push out. I like that it lights up when it's on. And then this is a game changer. If you right now have batteries that you have to plug the clips into in order to charge it, get one of these. So these are SAE charging ports. A lot of people uh, make them. Some of the ones that I have are from Yak Attack. Some of them are just generics I found on Amazon. I'll link those down below as well, as well as these push button switches that are awesome, fully waterproof as well. But when I get done at the end of the day, all I gotta do is plug in my SAE charging port there into my wall outlet and I'm good to go. This thing charges up, charges up overnight, and I don't gotta worry about these batteries. In front of the two screens, this is where I normally will have a cooler set up. As you can see, it is filled with Bang. This is uh, another one of my favorite flavors. This is the Blue Raz, absolutely love these. Uh, my mouth is getting a little parched and I need a little pick me up, so we're gonna crack one open. If you've been around the channel for a little while, you know Bang is a big sponsor of the channel. When you get thirsty and you're out on the water or ice, There's nothing better than a bang to quench that thirst. They have not only energy drinks, they have energy shots for those of you that just want that quick pick me up. Blue Raz is one of my favorite flavors. They've got the new white colored cans. Check them out, link down below in the description. I'm gonna take another drink here and we're gonna get back to the video. 
All right. So all the brains of the operation are inside of this port here. Once those cords come back out, they go right back out of these uh, through haul ports that go into the cable protector back into the back of both of the chart plotters. The only two cables that come off of there are the two cables that go directly down, again, wrapped up here super nicely. So in case I wanna move this at all into the pole setup. Before I had this pole set up, I had the Summit Fishing uh, pole. It works absolutely great. This one is definitely a little bit sturdier because it is a solid aluminum versus an extendable aluminum one like the Summit one, but they're both absolutely great. Uh, and then I've got, like I showed you down here, both of my live scope transducers. So we've got the LVS 32 a little bit higher up, the LVS 34 a little bit lower down, both on the pole mount brackets. They are super sturdy. Uh, it's open down here, but there actually is an extension pole. So if you're in any of those deep V boats and you want to add an extension, they have a pole that's twice as long as that that you can get extended on. It slips inside. So you can actually put the whole pole in there and just extend it down another six inches if you want, or you can go all the way that full, what is that, two and a half feet extra in length. This is still a beta test unit. It's not out on the market yet. I'll leave a link to their website on there in case you're interested in checking it out, but it is not available for sale yet. I'll also link the Summit Fishing Pole Mount uh, that I used previously, and I'm sure I'll use again in the future. I absolutely love the Summit Fishing stuff. I use all their stuff for ice fishing as well. Highly recommend. And that's about it. That's the full setup here. So the two screens on the crossbar mount, we've got the transducer pole, uh, we've got both transducers there. Wires go back. They go into the hull. I've got my screen recorder here. All the wires through the hull are enclosed, watertight, safe storage here, where we've got both black boxes up front here, one on the right, one on the left, all the cords nicely wound up. And then we've got our two NMC batteries, 48 amp hour from Amped Outdoors up front that go to a charging port right up here. So when I get it home, I don't have to open that up and pull batteries out and a master power switch. Hopefully you got some ideas from the video today. If you have any questions, comment down below. Otherwise, let me know what else you wanna see on the kayak here. Uh, I may be going to a single live scope setup in the near future because I just don't need both for comparisons anymore. Two is overkill to have on a kayak if you ask me, but I will keep both screens on the kayak is my plan as of now. So again, thank you so much for watching. Check out this other video on the screen where I talk more about this steady scope setup. And until next time, take it easy. <laughs>